One of the best parts of the beginning of the year is predicting what magic is to come in the following 12 months. Nintendo has a lot lined up on the table, and we're here to give you our top 10 predictions for 2019 and Nintendo Switch, the ones we really think are going to happen. Guys and girls, if you're excited for 2019 and like these predictions, definitely hit that like button. Let us know what you think about them, and if you have any of your own in the comments below, Gabe and I are going to make things even more interesting by playing a little head-to-head -head game this time around. Yes, Zach, you picked five. I picked five. I hope to come out victorious, but honestly, this could be a little bit of a toss-up here. It's a fun way to talk about what is sure to be a really good year for Nintendo Switch, just because there's so much that we know about already, and I can't even imagine the stuff that Nintendo still has somewhere up their tricky little sleeves. Yes, indeed. So we picked five each that we really believe in, and I will kick it off, Gabe, with one that I think it's been in the works for a while now. Nintendo is ready to drop another new IP. Now, I don't think this game comes out at all this year, but I think that we get the first glimpse. Splatoon was so successful for Nintendo. Look how that game went from a weird E3 curiosity into one of their tentpole franchises and some might say the best fighter in Smash Bros. Ultimate. They tried again with ARMS, and while that game was nowhere near as well received as Splatoon, it still was a valiant attempt, and I think there still is merit within that title. We didn't get a direct representative from the game in Smash Bros., but hey, we at least got assist trophies, and we had a lot of fun with those head-to-head -head clashes. So I couldn't possibly predict where they go next, but Nintendo has done a real nifty job at innovating new ideas, new characters, and new worlds to add on to the Mushroom Kingdom. What do they bring this time? I think we finally find out in 2019. And just to clarify, so Zach doesn't cheat when he tries to get a point a little bit later, this is entirely brand new IPs, not like different iterations of IP that already exist. No, this, this couldn't be like, oh, a new Mario like, sports game or... Yeah, yeah like, or no, like, racing. racing. No. Yeah, no, okay. Right, <laughs> just making sure. All right. It's a new character, a new face to add on to the, uh, the litany of Nintendo faces and friends. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to get through to my number one here. And Zach, you know my excitement for this game is through the roof. Fire Emblem Three Houses. I have a feeling it's going to be a game of the year contender. And I know that's crazy. And I'm only talking mm, for Switch. I'm only talking for Switch here because I know that the other okay. platforms have some insane stuff like happening. I mean, Sony in particular. But for Nintendo Switch, I think Fire Emblem Three Houses is going to blow us out of the water. I think that whatever they're doing there with the story and the combat, we've seen tiny glimpses of gameplay. I think they're doing something really, really cool there. And I'm hoping that this kind of reinvigorates your love for the franchise because I know you used to play them back in the day and it's still going to mm -hmm. bring me back to the franchise as well because I haven't played one since like high school really so it's been a very long time so I, I think this is going to be doing big things for us here yeah for me it's like what do they do to really elevate that gameplay loop and that franchise to another level we've seen them take things up a notch with almost every franchise that has made its first appearance on switch we don't know enough yet about three houses to decipher what might be changing this time around but if they are able to hey that that could be done this is kind of a tricky one Gabe to really like analyze at the end of the year if it came true or not is it is it up for game of the year i guess just quality wise it needs to have a high metacritic and it needs to really stand apart as something 85 and something above spectacular 85 okay. and above is what, is what i'll go with Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, my next one is another game-based prediction, and that is that Retro finally reveals their game, but unlike the new IP, I think this one releases in 2019 as well. Whether it is the rumored Star Fox racing title uh, that we heard a lot of scuttlebutt about back in 2018, or something entirely different, I do not know, but it's, it's time. It has been years and years, and we're ready for it, especially since a lot of Nintendo's first-party focus seems to be wrapped up in already announced projects this is the perfect place for a surprise to come from retro and come out and i i, I would still say that star fox racing game sounds appropriate they would like to have something i'm sure that can sort of fill in between mario karts and it would be a great party game and another interesting addition to the switch library I just want to note that you said back in 2018 when we're a day into 2019. <laughs> to me, that was the best thing that you hey, said there. <laughs> hey, we're, we're, we're moving on quick here. So long 2018, so long year two of Switch. Um, I'm on to, to, to brighter and greener pastures. Yeah. I mean, I just want to just very quickly talk about Star Fox Racing and just say that the fact that we've like heard so much from like so many different sources like leads me to believe that it will be that or at least that it was that at some point i don't know if maybe like that got canceled and retro's doing something else now who knows we have no idea so we right. we'll, we'll see how that turns out i i would say that i would personally wish it was a different 
Nintendo character that was getting the racing treatment, but if it ends up being a fun amalgamation of Mario Kart and Diddy Kong Racing, like I, I can't complain at all. And if it is more single playerly focused while also providing couch antics and and online antics, please don't don't Mario party us. Uh, I I will be pretty pleased. Speaking of being pretty pleased, Zach, I will be pretty pleased with my number two if it happens, and that is that we get something Zelda related. We think it's going to be a Skyward Sword remaster. That is kind of what makes the most sense, I guess. I mean, there are handheld versions of Zelda that you can maybe put on eShop if you remaster those a little bit, but that's sort of really, really out there. But something rela- something Zelda related is happening. Like, Nintendo doesn't go very long without doing something Zelda, and while there's no way it's a Breath of the Wild 2 or anything like that anytime soon, right. Zelda needs to kind of be a mainstay on Nintendo Switch because it's one of their biggest franchise, uh, franchises and Zelda doesn't have the opportunity to have like, you know, Mario Party or, or Mario Tennis Aces, so Zelda name Do needs... they though? Oh. Do they? Oh. Maybe that's what we could get. I would love to see them take the Legend of Zelda franchise in a alternate genre. I think that would be so cool. I mean, Link and his, his motorcycle are in Mario Kart. Why not let them have a Zelda Universe sports title, a Zelda Universe racing title, there's a plethora of characters you can draw from so many games and so many different places. You've got the environments lined up. You've got the charm lined up. You've got all sorts of items and interesting like side aspects. That's what I'd love to see Nintendo truly do if I'm if I'm getting uh, in, in a wish mode here. Give a different franchise the the secondary genre treatment that Mario gets year in and year out. Yeah, that that'd be really really cool. Not a prediction though. Yeah, just a hope. And a dream. All right. My number three is that the eShop finally gets a redesign. We've seen them add some search elements to try and make things easier, but as the number of games continues to climb and they continue to push out the 20, 30, 40 eShop releases every week, at some point it's going to reach, I think, a breaking point and you're going to need a refresh, a redesign. The perfect time for this, if they do decide to drop a Switch Pro, you bring out a new system and you allow that to be the catalyst for some online interface changes. It would make a world of difference for ease of searchability, for rising and, and, and lifting the top titles to where they need to be for exposure, and it would be just a really nice, fresh coat of paint for a system that is functional, but pretty bland since it lacks themes and it lacks a very dynamic storefront interface. Microsoft does a particularly good job with this. They they update their storefront and just their like I mean it's not called the blade system anymore, their dashboard, whatever they call it now, I don't even know. They do that pretty often. And having Nintendo do that just has has a little bit of refresh and a quality of life for the e- ecosystem, that that that'd be really, really good. So I, I hope you're right on that one, Zach. I really, really do. But I'm going to move on to my third one here, which is Switch-related. A Switch Pro releases in the fall, and Zach, and Zach, I think it's going to be the best way to play Pokemon. I, I'm starting to think that hmm. that they're going to make a little bit bigger deal of Pokemon that, than we think. Because we think, hey, oh man, could it be like a little bit too similar to Let's Go? I know that's a worry that both of us have every once in a while. But if they do have a Switch Pro, what better game to show it off with than their biggest game of the year? And that's going to be a brand new generation of Pokemon. So yes, yeah, Switch Pro or, or something along those lines, a Switch iteration is happening. I hope it's not just a bigger battery or, or you know, a better screen or just some more, you know, hard drive space. I, I hope it's something kind of substantial. Uh, we'll see as far as that goes, but I do think we're getting some type of stopgap w- within what the Switch is and what it will eventually become with whatever comes next. Utilizing Pokemon as the vehicle to drive home the worth and value of a new Switch rehash is very interesting to me because typically Pokemon is used as a game that, like, appeals to everyone and, you know, kind of, you know, hey, it's it's, it's something that's fresh for 10-year-olds and it's, its focus is sort of on a lower common denominator. So pushing not only the gameplay, but pushing the tech in some way would be very interesting. And I don't think you mean anything along the lines of exclusivity, no, but just no, maybe better no. performance or... or uh, who knows? They would what, whatever never they could do. do exclusivity. No, no. But whatever they decide to do, and whatever they're working to 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 you know make this Switch Pro a better version, if that was really evident within Pokemon, hey, it's you can't go wrong. That thing is going to sell well, um, and so why not? Although I am curious to see how back to back years of Pokemon, how that how what, what like the carryover, you know, the crossover. How many what percentage of Let's Go players also 
uh, put up 60 for Pokemon 2019. But in my fourth prediction, you will get to save 60 of your 2019 dollars because I'm predicting that Animal Crossing gets delayed. Yes, we got a very cute cutscene with Isabel, and yes, we got the announcement tied alongside with it, but what other major Nintendo upcoming title also got a logo and nothing more, and since then has seen zero new updates. I'm talking about Metroid Prime 4, and while Animal Crossing did get a date, unlike Metroid Prime, it did just get a logo. Luigi's Mansion 3 had some gameplay. Fire Emblem Three Houses had some gameplay, so there is reason to believe that those games are further along. Now, maybe I'm completely wrong and Animal Crossing shows up at the January Direct, but I feel like of all the games, given the nature of the systems that Animal Crossing utilizes, and given how full this year feels, maybe that is something that does see a shift and a switch to 2020. First of all, I want to start with something supportive towards you. We had a date for Yoshi. We had a year for Yoshi. That didn't happen. There was a delay. So there is... Mm -hmm. It's happened before, but I don't think Animal Crossing is being delayed. I think Nintendo knows how much of a rabid audience there is for that franchise in particular, and I don't think they put a date on it if they don't absolutely know they can hit it. So I, I think that's coming. I think you're wrong on it being delayed, but like, like we said, there there is some examples of, of it totally happening. So I can see this one going either way, honestly. So I hope it comes out. I'm very excited yeah. to see what they do this time around and to give it a fresh, fresh look. I just worry that given we've seen nothing... You know, and if we don't at the early directs, it's like, okay, are you going to blow it out at E3 and then launch it, you know, a couple months later? Nintendo did that with Super Mario Party, but Animal Crossing seems like a bigger venture, and I just wonder if they're really ready to drop that, especially if there are unannounced things like a, a Zelda-related title. Do, do they have room, and do they have the time to dedicate marketing-wise to support Animal Crossing Switch? Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, another big game next year, Zachary. Luigi's Mansion 3, and I think that game is going to be way bigger than you think. That's my prediction. Luigi's Mansion has, like, traditionally not been the biggest of experiences. I mean, they're great games. Don't get me wrong here, Zach. What if they take what they did in Nintendo Land and kind of bring a more fun multiplayer aspect to Luigi's Mansion? And, we're you know, we're sure it's going to have multiplayer, Zach. What if there is true co-op, Zach, true multiplayer? Oh, man. That, 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 that's, that's a fun prospect there. Just, Zach, you and I going through a mansion, trying not to get scared. You're going to be scared. I know I'm not, so I'll be protecting <laughs> you. You know what I mean? I got you, man. These ghosts can't hurt, can't, can't hurt you. I'm super excited to see what, what new elements they bring to Luigi's Mansion. Now, I personally don't really want co-op just because I feel like it's a, it's a solitary experience, and I'm, I'm super excited to see what new characters and what lore elements they bring into Luigi's Mansion 3. I hope it has a substantial story focus, but seeing the expansion that Luigi's Mansion 2 made on 1, I think they really could go bigger here. I like your idea of bringing some multiplayer and borrowing from what Nintendo did, Land did with their Luigi's Mansion minigame and and just adding sort of a component where there are fun mini games or some sort of competitive aspect would be cool. I'm I'm pulling for a hotel. I think a Luigi's Mansion hotel would be very cool because then you could have cool guests come in. You know I'm all about crossovers. So I want, you know, Bowser to be chilling in the mansion. I want you know, maybe Baby Mario to be spending the night at the mansion, the hotel. Um, I'm curious what the story is going to hold for that, but I do see this one as being more dynamic than we expect, and, and that seems to be the case for for so many a Switch first party titles. So hopefully, it holds true for Little Luigi. Uh, my fifth and final prediction for the year is a little bit more general, but it's that our favorite Switch game of 2019 isn't announced yet, which is ballsy because we have so many major titles announced for 2019 but i predict that the game come late december that we're saying is our favorite on switch of the year is not announced yet now that might not be necessarily from nintendo first party proper it could be from a third party source but i think something is waiting that will really blow us away and even if luigi's mansion is great fire emblem is fantastic and animal crossing does indeed come out i feel like for us gabe you and i at least one of our favorite games is still not known. And this is exactly what I was going to ask you. You already touched on it. But if you're not talking Nintendo specifically, something like Celeste, where like this indie comes and wows us the way that Celeste did. It was our second favorite game of, of you know, 2018. First. Like, come on. You might be right here. And honestly, just thinking about it gets me even more excited because everything that we know is coming 
is big and exciting in its own right, but the unknown is always just so much more exciting or scary. Depends on, on how I, you I, look at it. I do need to ask for clarification, a rules rules check here. We don't have a referee, but we're going to have to, to yeah, we'll figure, figure out. this out. Does Metroid Prime 4 count for this prediction, considering that it's not announced for 2019? No, 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 no. You, it, it, okay, so if Metroid Prime 4 comes out, no, and that's you, our favorite you said, game. It doesn't matter. Okay. You said something that isn't okay, announced. Okay, it has, and, and okay, that's been okay. announced. All right, all right. Just, just making sure. Yes, I still hold to that, and I think it could be a crossover partnership with another publisher, as we saw in Mario Plus Rabbids, but something maybe a little deeper this time. Or perhaps it's honestly a third-party exclusive that blows us away. We're still kind of waiting for that. We've got really quality ports. It seems like we're going to get some great day-and-date releases, a la Mortal Kombat 11. But where is like the mega major third party game that is so impressive and so fun and stands alongside these Nintendo titles as a major seller and a must have Switch title? That is what I'm waiting for. Payday sequel exclusive for Nintendo Switch. Yes. All right. <laughs> Please no. Speaking of things that probably aren't gonna happen, but I I don't know. I don't really want a payday sequel. I don't know what I'm even saying here anymore, Zach. But wait, we will finally get themes, Zach. I think this is the year. Mm-hmm. It's so I, I was looking through my settings right because I, I went into airplane mode when I went on this field trip to uh, preserve battery and I, I was in the in the menu which I don't do very often and I went to themes I was like dude there's only two of them <laughs> it's like this yeah. is so weird dark and light yeah. that's all you got <laughs> come on Nintendo make this happen I, I don't even like fully believe that this happens this is more just me trying to speak it into existence more than anything. I mean it would it would be a home run if it does it's something that they've already done really well on 3ds so it's totally within their wheelhouse it's totally within their repertoire it's totally within their past precedent so bring it to switch it would make a big difference and hey maybe it does go alongside the eShop. and i am beginning to wonder if there are certain elements that they have withheld in order to incentivize and make the transition to a revamped switch more palatable by providing a 1.5 type update not only for the hardware but for the ui so keep an eye on that a lot of these could tie together in interesting ways gabe let's rehash our list one more time for the people out there so we can set them in stone and see our scores once 2019 is closed for me it's that nintendo drops a new ip not releasing it but at least giving us a first look retro's game is revealed and releases probably that star fox racing game we've heard rumored but hey i'll be up for anything from that quality developer eShop gets a redesign i think they need to make that more appealing more navigatable and i think they do this year Animal Crossing delayed out of 2019. It's a big title with a big logo and not much else, so it would make sense to be moved. And then our favorite Switch game of 2019 just hasn't been announced yet. For me, Zachary, I have Fire Emblem Three Houses becoming a Game of the Year contender for us. I have something Zelda-related happening, and I'm really crossing my fingers for that one quite hard. After that, I have a Switch Pro releasing in the fall, and... Something about Pokemon being tied into that one. Luigi's Mansion 3 being way bigger than we think. And finally, Zach, I really want those themes. Yes, indeed. I'm I'm still pulling for that Zelda alternate genre game. I think. <laughs> now, now, now I'm just feeling so miffed that Nintendo has never done this. Like, why not? That's such a major franchise. And maybe it's maybe it's too it's too much on a pedestal like link would never do this he he's an adventurer and he is a hero of time he don't got you know i don't got time to play basketball or mess around with a party oh but, man um, if link plays basketball zach <laughs> oh. it, it is ripe for some sort of uh mashup in some capacity and maybe just maybe We'll get it if Gabe is on to something. Let us know what you're on to, which of our predictions you like most, and if any of your own in the comments down below. Make sure to hit that like button. It does help us out a lot, and we super appreciate you supporting the channel. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest and greatest from the Switch in 2019. Gabe, we've got 12 months to figure out which of these come true. So I will see you late December. In the meantime, have a fantastic day, everybody. For myself and Gabe, Switch Force, out. <laughs>